Hey, Bears, Eric here. Have you seen this extremely based Nick Offerman clip yet where he accepted an award from The Last of Us? If not, here we go. Let's watch it. Wow. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Film Independent. Uh, I, uh, I'm astonished to be in this category, which is bananas. Um, congrats to all of you. Uh, this is crazy. Um, thanks to HBO for having the guts to participate in this storytelling tradition that is truly independent, uh, stories with guts that when homophobic hate comes my way and says, why did you have to make it a gay story? Uh, we say, because you ask questions like that, it's mm. not a gay story, it's a love story, you, you asshole. Um, So more of that. So overall, I think that's a pretty based take from Nick Offerman. I love that he stood up to all of these assholes, as he says, all these bigots, these homophobes. He stood up to them on this podium and said, look, more of this, more stories like the one we had in The Last of Us. Now, I will be completely upfront about this. In my opinion, that episode was probably one of, if not the best episode of the season, just just putting it out there. Also, it's one of the best episodes of television, pieces of art I've ever seen that showcases what it's like for two gay men uh, living together and dealing with the existence of being gay. Even in this weird, like fucked up world, it, it actually told a very tender story between these two men. And I was very impressed with that. I, I love that episode. And it was also a huge red flag. If you saw a lot of these channels out there and we know who they are talking shit about this episode, uh, being objectively bad, we know that it's not a bad episode of television. The only reason they're mad at it is because it had gay men in it. That's the only reason the characters were gay. Uh, cause there's no way you could argue it was a bad episode of television. It's just not, I, 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 I reject all of that. I reject it all. Uh, but I will say this, like him coming out and saying, look, we made this. It was fantastic. Uh, thank you to all these people for having the guts, as he put it, the nerve to go out there and make this kind of content and, 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 uh, show it to the world. I think all of that is fantastic. However, there are a few people that have talked about the nuance of what he said. There was a line in there where he said, it's not a gay story, it's a love story. And a lot of people are taking issue with the way he phrased that. And um, I think we need to take a step back and look at the nuance of, of what's actually happening here. So yes, he could have phrased it a different way, right? He could have said, it's not only a gay story, it is a love story. I think that more accurately represents how the community would have phrased what that was, what the what the episode of the show was uh, for them. It was it was a gay story. It was also a love story. It was a gay love story, um, you know. But I think what he's doing here as an ally, because let's be clear here, Nick Offerman is an ally. I think what he's doing here is he's trying to throw the bigotry back in the faces of people who argue about this online, because nuance doesn't work for those guys. It doesn't. There, it's a very black and white, you know, no gray area community when it comes to stuff. So I think when he said that, he was speaking directly to them, because they're the same people that would argue like a trans woman is not a woman, you know. But trans just explains what kind of woman she is. So a trans woman is a woman. There's a community of people full of idiots, and all they do is get really loud on the internet, like a bunch of cavemen who are upset that gay men are being featured on television. So I think that Nick's take here is extremely based. Um, I so appreciate him standing up to this and saying this because keep in mind, he is not a gay man. So he's being put out there and thrust into all this drama and, and stuff like that. He didn't have to say anything. He didn't have to. And I'm not saying, oh, we need to give him an award for being you know, a cisgender straight man for uh, representing the gay community. Look, I don't want to get wrapped up in all of that stuff because I think it's reductive on what's actually happening right now. This man stood up on stage and spoke directly to all of the people that we have to deal with all the time on this fucking app, 
on all social media outlets and said, you are not going to uh, uh, troll us into oblivion. It's not going to happen. We need more stories like this. We need more things like this being out there, being visible in the world. And it's making them so angry. I'm already seeing videos being made. I'm already seeing comments come out, people attacking Nick Offerman. You know them, Hollywood angry with woke actor, like just those kinds of videos. It's already happening. Uh, they're already trying to come for him. But Nick Offerman is proving here that he doesn't give a fuck. And I think that's absolutely amazing. I think it's super important. And for me personally, I also feel the same way about it. I think that more people in Hollywood who are working on these kinds of stories that feature people from the community, if you're going to go as far as to go, hey, we're going to tell a story about this community, but we're going to you know, cast people who are allies instead of people who are part of the community. If you're going to go that far, then you need to also have that nerve, have that uh, drive to get up and speak back in the face of bigotry. I think it's absolutely important that you do that because we expect to be treated that way. If you're going to take stories about our community and put them out there, we expect you to have at least a little concern and care about the fallout and the backlash from that. Let's not have a Budweiser situation where they just throw the queer people under the bus and then back over it again and then roll back over it again and then try to act like they're giving us a hand again, then put us back under the bus again. No, none of that. Like, if you're going to have our back, we don't need performative allyship. We've had too much of that already. So if you're going to do it, do it the right way. I think Nick Offerman is doing it the right way. You may have a different take than me. I am absolutely curious. What is your take on this? Do you think this is based? I think it's based. Do you think it's based? I think he absolutely eviscerated <laughs> these people with these comments. I think it just stabs right into the heart of what they're doing with all their bigotry and hate. And more of this, please. Uh, thank you, Nick Offerman. And, um, you know. Hopefully he'll get a chance to uh, come back and do something else as amazing as this episode of television.